So the, so the title is Exploit Spotting. Let me introduce myself. Uh, my current employee is WebSense Incorporation. Oh, okay. okay, thank you. So I'm currently performing researches related to malwares and exploit detections. And my former employer was EI Digital Security, and I developed IPS security product, and I did a lot of uh, vendor patches regularly. And I found some vulnerabilities like MS-06, 070, and CE Arc Server one, and I use, uh, usually used uh, static analysis to find the vulnerabilities. And my tool that I'm going to talk about today is uh, Darren Grimm, and it's a binary diffing tool, and I did it for like something like a weekend project. So I'm telling this because this is very relevant to what I'm going to talk about. So in, uh, at this point, I'm going to give you some simple question here. Uh, it's a very simple. Uh, do you really believe that if a patch is out, every security problems will be gone? Something like uh, everyone, if there is uh, some zero days are out, people are all, always talking about some kind of uh, patch release date or something like that. So people looks like, seems like they believe that if a patch is out, looks like every problems will be gone and every system will be secure after that. But I think uh, the answer might be known for this question because if we look at the config worm like a few years ago, like uh, uh, actually last year actually, so actually it used the MS080607 RPC vulnerability to propagate through the internal network and the vulnerability itself was fixed at least a few months ago before each outbreak. So, and how about the drive-by exploit and exploit packs? Uh, usually they contain a lot of like uh, old vulnerabilities, like a one year old, two years old, something like that, and it still works. And they use uh, a lot of like obfuscations uh, to evade IPS or web filters. And looks like that's what is happening. And how about the exploit frameworks like Metasploit and Core Impact and Canvas? Uh, it's not usually about the zero days. Uh, I didn't see many times that any exploit frameworks released any zero days themselves. They usually write something from POC or something from wildlife exploit. So, Looks like one day exploit, what I'm talking about now, might be very, uh, still very important. So let's talk about exploit and uh, security product relationship here. So with exploit, we are talking about POC, just proof of concept that is uh, disclosed on full, dis full disclosure list or something or exploit packs that is sold by, sold by like uh, if you pay like 500 bucks or something, maybe you can uh, buy this one, the exploit packs. And there are other things like a drive-by exploit that is uh, unloaded to some website and people just visit that website that they are infected or something. So, and there are other exploits like exploit frameworks like a Metasploit, Core Impact, and Canvas. And they are exploited, but they are still like a security product that can do some kind of a real world testing. So these are exploits. And how about the security product? Uh, by security product, I meant like uh, antivirus and web filter and mail filter and IDS and IPS and vulnerability scanner like uh, uh, Retina or yeah, something like that. I only know Retina because I worked for EI. Uh, anyway, there were like uh, basically what I have, have have seen from the security industry until now is like uh, they are trying to create a lot of signatures for all the threats they found. So it's all about the signatures. If there are some like wildlife exploits, they create signatures for that. And there are some like zero days are out they create signatures or they make some analyzer modules that actually can parse that kind of data and catch that uh, 
yeah, exploit. So it looks like still it matters like uh, to find one day exploit because uh, looks like there are many uh, computers and personal computers and corporate networks that hasn't hasn't been applied the patches for some reasons. For example, uh, if someone is running some corporate website that is selling some stuff, and I heard that. Uh, I heard that like uh, just reboot, rebooting the system takes like sometimes more than 20 minutes or something. So during the time, uh, the company can't make money. So they just uh, postpone their like a uh, recycle uh, date or something. So they do patch like every few, few months maybe. So usually Microsoft releases uh, every month, every second Tuesday, I remember. So they just postpone the like a patch date. So during the time, there are some time frame that uh, the systems inside their network can be infected. And looks like, so the conclusion here is that zero days are very serious concern, but one days are also very like dangerous still. So there are, you might wonder, like uh, you, you might question me like, uh, is there any like, uh, examples that actually use the one day exploit or any examples like that. So I just collected some of them here. So uh, there was one like MS07004. It was a VML issue. And actually he used my tool to diff uh, the binaries and he created the exploit within like a few days, I remember. And the next one is MS08067. And I believe it was found by, I, I mean, not found, analyzed by Steve Ridley. And looks like he used uh, my tool to diff uh, the binary. And he created the binary uh, from his blog, he said, uh, like within a few hours. And how about the MS10024? Actually, this is uh, some uh, undisclosed uh, uh, vulnerability that found by, actually not found, it's a kind of caught by Core Lab, and they found that Microsoft patched, silently patched some issue within their system, within their like uh, DLL, not telling anyone about that, so. And now you can know that the binary dipping matters uh, to create exploit. With the POC, you can write exploit very easily uh, compared to like a without POC thing. So you can just refactor the code and put something there and it may take a lot of time, but compared to the situation without POC, it takes uh, relat relatively uh, little time. And if you don't have POC, what option do you have? You only have like, a, uh, you can read the vendor's page, advisor pages or yeah, something like that, but you will never find anything useful there. They are just uh, saying something very vague and some kind of very like uh, abstract thing there. So the only option for now is binary diffing. So you just diff the actual binary they released and you can find the exploit. And how about the IPS and vulnerability scanners? Uh, they need to protect some unknown, like unknown threat before they emerge. So they need to diff the binaries before uh, the, the someone creates some exploit for that vulnerability that hasn't been disclosed before. So there are some good news here. Like uh, Microsoft uh, started like uh, some program, a program called MAPP, and how many people heard about MAPP here? Can you raise your hand? Uh, still not, not many people. Looks like maybe uh, 10, 10 people here. So yeah, it's not that known yet, looks like so. But still, it's very useful to like a security vendors because they can get the actual report from Microsoft saying the details, the real technical details about the vulnerabilities, like uh, the point and the crash report. and the how to reproduce and they actually like uh, provide uh, like uh, something like a POC code 
reprodu reprodu reproduction code or something like that. So, but I found that they are still like uh, they are still hiding things usually. Like uh, if they release a patch, uh, sometimes they they just uh, like uh, saying. Uh, they are just saying that they patched just one vulnerability, but actually, someone just dipped the binary. They found that they find that uh, they patched like uh, two or three more. So I will. Going, I'm going to show the examples here after some uh, some talk about the tool itself and the current limitation with the current binary. Uh, dipping tools are like uh, uh, I found that the managing files are like uh, too boring. Like uh, you need to download the patches and you need to store them and you need to like uh, sort out which files to div. And Microsoft release, releases like uh, 12 patches and it takes uh, simply it takes too many too much time and effort. And the other problem is that if you div some binaries from like Adobe or something, then it shows like more than three, uh, 3,500 entries dipped. So even though you can go each entry and you, you finish each entry by like uh, within one minute, it takes a few days. So it's not feasible at all. So I'm proposing, I'm releasing Darren Green 3 in a few days and it has a web interface and it's, so it's web interface and people like feels very like uh, comfortable with web interface and it has a bin collector. It collects binaries and it manages all the binaries for you. So you don't need to worry about the version numbers and the uh, file names and company names. You don't need to worry about that. And it also has some score like uh, index number called security implication score. It shows what function has more security implications inside it. So let's see. Uh, the architecture change is like uh, the old one is left side and the uh, Darren Green 3 is on the right side. And the old one had only GUI and diffing engine and some basic set of functionality. But uh, Darren Green 3 has uh, Above, above that, it has like a Python interface above like a diffing engine and database. And it also has a bin collector and web console. And this is the main page. It's just web interface. And it has a bin collector. Uh, it collects the binaries for you. And it, it, it actually, it has some kind of uh, experimental feature like uh, downloading MS patches automatically for you. And here's the screenshot for the diffing itself. If you see the, uh, around here, you can see that the patch number MS08067 here, and the OS, no, OS name here, MS, uh, I mean Windows XP SP3, and it shows the file name here, net API32. And the cool thing is that it finds the original binary to div automatically using the file name and the version string. It just compares the version string and it finds the most closest one so that it doesn't uh, create too many research. So let's talk about security implication score. Uh, the objective of binary diffing is actually locating the vulnerabilities uh, as quickly as possible. So I introduced some numbers like called the security implication score. But there are a lot of noises caused by something like a feature update and code refactoring or compile option change. If uh, the vendor changes uh, like optimization level a little bit, then it will create totally different uh, binary. Then it will create some diff entries like more than 3,500 or something, then uh, it will waste your time. So Using this number, security implication score, you can just sort out that kind of stuff out of the result, and you just need to like look into something that has meaning. And also, does this disassembler doesn't work that well? It's very advanced now, but it still like uh, generates a lot of false positive entries. Like uh, it sometimes uh, treat some data entry as a 